How's it going guys? Welcome to the very first build of my full suit of armor project. If you haven't seen my last two videos, um, you should. And also, I made bracers. Uh, they're mostly samurai inspired, but I put Mad Max in the title so that I would get more views. Sorry. But shout out to Ryan Large, uh, Pointy Cheese, Brave Halo Spartan, and Grim for not being little immature baby wieners and for sticking up for me against the people that I guess believe that I can filter feed like Spongebob and that I should just be able to buy all these building materials with the gold doubloons that I scoop out of my pet unicorn's litter box and therefore that I don't deserve to get any money for all the hours that I put into these videos. I mean, it's kind of a sad day that I'm so grateful to people for understanding that I will die if I don't eat that I'll give them a shout out in my videos but if it's a sad day I guess it's a sad day so thank you guys very much for that uh, but anyways I uh, hope you guys like this build it was a lot of fun to do and I think it'll be fun to watch so uh, here it is so first I've got this big huge piece of PVC and I'm going to cut this line right here so that I can use both halves as forms for the bracers. Now I've used this heat gun to heat up and form this piece of PVC to the approximate size of my arm and I'm going to do the same thing to this side too. But in case you don't have enough money to afford the full size PVC, you can buy a half size and just cut it one time and then use the heat gun to form it and open it up to the size of your arm. But I decided to go with the full size PVC so that I can have two forms so that I can make the bracers quicker. And now we're going to draw and cut out just a really rough design for the bracer and make sure that you add about a quarter inch all around to your initial design so that when we're finished you're going to be able to trim off the edges to clean it up and you're not going to lose anything. Now for the base of the bracer I'm going to be using two different types of fabrics. I've got canvas here and I've got sackcloth here. Now the canvas as you can see has a much tighter weave than the sackcloth but that means that the sackcloth is also thicker. So the canvas is going to go on the bottom and the top layers so that uh, all of the surfaces that are being struck or that have to deal with any load bearing are going to be really tightly woven together. But then on the inside where I want it to be thicker, uh, I'm going to be using this sackcloth here. Now if you've got the money and the time, then maybe just make the whole thing out of canvas. But making the whole thing out of canvas is going to cost more than using the sackcloth because this costs half as much as this. And also it's going to take way, way, way longer to dry if all of your layers are made out of canvas just because the weave is so tight. But what I'm going to do is one layer of canvas on the bottom, three layers of sackcloth on top of that, and then another layer of canvas on top of that. So now that I've got all these pieces cut out, what I'm going to do is mix up some fiberglass resin and then I'm going to individually lay down a layer, cover that in resin, put down the next layer, cover that in resin, do that until I have the full stack and I'm going to do that flat so that I don't have to worry about getting all the edges lined up perfectly actually on the form. So I'm just going to do that flat and then pick up the whole sandwich thing and lay it down on the form and just let it dry overnight. And this is probably totally unnecessary, but just in case, I put some rubber bands around it and some popsicle sticks underneath the rubber bands to keep the edges flat while it's drying. Now I'm just gonna go to bed and in the morning I'll check on this again. Guess what day it is? It's tomorrow of yesterday. So these are dry. These turned out pretty much perfect. They're like just the right amount of springy, but there's really no give to them, so they're gonna give you a lot of protection. But the first thing we gotta do is trim off these ugly edges right here. are cleaned up I'm gonna cut on this black line so that I can bend my arm without it digging in and then I'm also going to round out all the corners now I got these things shaped to pretty much exactly what I need but really quick I wanted to go over something that it seemed like more than one of you guys were having a little bit of confusion over in the comment section in one of my older videos it was about the difference between fiberglass resin and fiberglass mat just to clear some stuff up fiberglass resin is the liquid that you saturate the fiberglass mat or fiberglass cloth or in this case the uh, canvas and sackcloth to harden it but this stuff doesn't have any itchy stuff in it none of this uh, resin is gonna give you any splinters or anything like that 
All of your splinters come from fiberglass products because it is essentially made out of fibers of flexible glass, get it? Just one of the main advantages of using the fiberglass mat over the canvas and sackcloth stuff is that the fiberglass is actually designed to be used with the resin. Uh, so as a result, you're going to be able to flex the end product a lot more harshly and have it still bounce back to its regular shape. Uh, but I didn't really need this stuff to flex, so I just went with this stuff. But I'm not going to mess with you guys. Uh, pretty much the main reason that I didn't go with this and that I went with this instead was just because I really didn't feel like dealing with all the splinters. Like, yeah, you can you can wear gloves, you can wear a long sleeve shirt and a respirator and goggles and all that jazz. But in the end of the day, when you're like grinding on it with an angle grinder and all the stuff is floating all over the place, getting all over your workshop, it's gonna get on your skin somehow, and when it does, it's gonna suck. And then you go and take a shower to get it all off, then you come back and clean up your table, and then you got it all over you again. It's a pain, so I just figured I would save myself some grief and go with this. This is cheaper anyways. Now I'm pretty much over the whole Walmart machete thing when it comes to blades, but as a source of 16th inch scrap steel to save me a trip to the store, why not? So I'm gonna cut some strips out of this thing uh, to reinforce the bracer with. And quick tip, go ahead and drill all your rivet holes before you cut the pieces out. That way it's easier to manage than trying to drill through these little tiny strips of steel. And now in exactly the way that you would imagine, we're going to be using rivets to attach these things to this thing. So what you end up with is something like this. If you don't think this looks cool, there's the unsubscribe button, buddy. See you later. But if you're not subscribed and you think this looks pretty cool, then there's the subscribe button, buddy. See ya right now. And quick tip for the side pieces, if your bracer slants like mine does, you're gonna need to twist your steel piece just a little bit so that it can lay flat on the base. Super easy, just clamp it in the vise, use a pair of pliers, and just twist it. Now clamp the twisted piece to the side of the base and then drill through these little holes with the same size drill bit that you use to make the little holes with. And I like to drill and rivet the two opposite ends first just to make sure that all the holes line up when you're done. And just to save myself a little bit of time with making this thing comfortable once it's time to do all the padding, I'm gonna be doing the riveting from the inside rather than the outside. So instead of putting the rivet through like this, I'm gonna be putting it through here. Then you pop it. And now for the plate that goes on the top of the hand, we're gonna cut this out of just some electrical housing faceplate. This is probably the simplest part of the whole build. Uh, this is 16th inch steel and it was 50 cents at Menards. All right, so I cut those little hooks off the corners and then I made the first bend right on top of the middle finger knuckle and then two more bends on both sides a half inch from the sides. Then just for looks, I curled up the corners and that should be it for the plate on the top of the hand. And then I attached this loop of nylon webbing using a couple bigger rivets and a couple of washers too. So here's what we got so far with the glove underneath it. Now we have to make the plate that protects the wrist and links both of these pieces together. And I'm gonna be cutting that piece out of the shell of my old propane tank shield from Homemade Weapons 4. I already repurposed the guts of it for something else. So this piece has just been lying around this whole time. Might as well put it to use. And now for the straps to attach the bracer to your arm. I like the buckle on these HDX locking tie downs from Home Depot, but I don't really want blue nylon on the bracers so I'm just gonna harvest the buckles out of them and this is pretty cool you can pull this part of the nylon just right out of the buckle you don't even have to cut it or anything you got a nice loop right here you've got a hook on this end this is definitely a candidate for a future mystery project but sadly you do have to cut this one and then to attach the new black strap to the buckle I just did that same thing that I've always done where you heat up a rivet on the stove and then melt it through and then use the stove to melt the edge of the thing so it doesn't fray and from there it's as easy as riveting the strap that's attached to the buckle to one side of the bracer and then just another strap to the other side of the bracer to go into that end but as far as all these straps going on up here uh, it's a little bit more involved so I'm gonna explain what I did and then I'm gonna show you how I did it so first of all all of the rivets go in from the inside not from the outside so first you've got the thumb strap which looks like this when it's not riveted into anything and that's just riveted straight into there and then you've got the hand strap which looks like this when it's not connected to anything and that also just goes straight in there so as you can see here there's two layers of nylon right here and that bottom strap right there is where this all starts so it rivets right there using the same rivet as the thumb strap it goes underneath that middle plate it just skips it completely it's not riveted to it and then it rivets directly to the bracer so the front plate and the bracer are riveted directly together and then it doubles back on itself and once it doubles back on itself that's where you attach it to that middle plate right there it also attaches right there to the middle plate and then the end of it rivets directly right back on top of where it started and also to conserve rivets, the strap that is attached from the front plate to that plate by this rivet right here, this rivet is also used to attach the buckle to the bracer. 
So here's all the straps you're gonna need. You got the thumb strap, you've got the hand strap, you've got the two straps for the plates, and then the bracer straps with the buckle. All right, now despite what you might think, we're actually not gonna start with the beginning right there. We're gonna start in the middle so that when we're done with all that middle stuff, we'll be able to fold it in half and finish that last rivet right there. So here are the layers. First, a washer goes underneath here, then the buckle goes on top right there, then your strap goes on top of the buckle, and then another washer goes on top of there. You put a rivet through this whole thing and snap it. So here's how it looks after that. Next, we attach the middle plate. So you're gonna take another rivet, another washer, and you're going to put the rivet through the washer, put that through the next hole in the strap, and then that goes into the middle plate. And once that's through, you can pop it like this, but just for style, I'm going to add this washer that I painted black onto here, but this really doesn't do anything. It just makes it look a little cooler. Here's how that looks. Now we're going to put some rivets through these holes right here, and here's how that looks. And now this bracer is the right hand, so these two straps right here don't attach to anything extra on the other side of this plate. So you can just attach these directly to here. The straps on this side though also have the thumb strap connected underneath. Then with the thumb strap in, the hand strap goes right here. And that's it for all the straps. Now I'm just going to cut off these sharp corners right there and then line the inside of it with some of this craft foam from Hobby Lobby. I just used some hot glue to put the foam in there, but once the foam is in there, these things are done and they're actually surprisingly comfortable, especially if you wear a pair of gloves on the inside with these hard knuckles. But anyways, that's all I got for today, guys. Remember, the Zed Knot t-shirt sale is only gonna be on for about five more days and after that, you'll never be able to get this design of Zed Knot t-shirt ever again. So go ahead and go to www.teespring.com forward slash alpha dash clothing to get your own before time is up. Uh, yes, Teespring ships internationally. No, I don't know how much it's going to cost to ship to you specifically. Please check Teespring for that stuff. I can't help you there. Uh, but that's all I got for today. So thank you guys very, very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.